Well, thank you all very much for coming out. I appreciate it very, very much. <laughs> this has been a uh, dream come true. Uh, it took several villages to make it happen, but I walked in this morning, and it was the first time I've seen it completed. Uh, the last time I was here, it was bare walls, and the booths weren't done yet. And it has just turned out to be something that it was way beyond my imagination. I just wish mom and daddy were here to see it. They'd love it. Um, they'd be parked right over there all day long to the night. And so what I've gotten to see so far is just a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that went into the making. And y'all are doing a great job. I'm getting so many reports back on the hard work that y'all are doing and everybody's loving the food. The atmosphere is wonderful. There's history. There's stories to be told everywhere I look. So, anybody got any questions? Yes. First time you or someone said, let's do a restaurant. What was, what, what was, your, what was the first time this idea came, came about? I said, are you on crack? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. I'm a professional restaurant goer. goer and the uh, best thing I can make is a reservation. So I know nothing about it except I know what's good and what's bad. And so when the community joined together like they did and the city council came to me and asked me to do this, when I saw their passion for it, then I saw the building. Um, 15,000 square feet, three floors. The top floor was the Masonic Temple. I thought, wow, what history? What stories to be told? Because I'm a singer, but I love to tell stories in my song or whatever it's going to be, just a regular story. So it, it was really neat to, to be talked into it, and I'm so glad they did. I hope you had time to do it. How have I had time to yeah. do it? Well, as you see, this is the first time I've been here uh, in a long time. I, I, we do a 2.30 conference call, a Zoom, every Tuesday. We hadn't missed in a long, long time having one. I've missed because I was either filming or working or flying or doing something, but it was a commitment that they stayed with and made sure everything was was on time. They were really sweet. They let me pick out the dishes and, and the silverware. And, you know, they kept me involved. I really did appreciate that because they could have kind of skipped over that and got answers quicker, but they let me be involved and, and it's been a really a fun process. What was on your mind as you, as you picked out everything and as you and Steve at the menu. Uh, tell us a little bit about that process and what you were thinking about. Well, I let Chef Curtis do the menu. I mean, I told him that some of the things I really want to have on the menu, like beans and cornbread. That's uh, I love beans, love cornbread, and certain things like that. And then he kept bringing up other stuff. And I said, uh huh. And I said at first I wanted it to be a very small menu, but he kept coming up with more things to eat. And I said, well, I like that. And then this menu went to two pages, and I like everything he's he's presented. So it's uh, it's it's really a fun adventure for me because I like to eat. Next question. In terms of uh, tourism, Rico, what is your hope for this restaurant and its impact on not only Atoka but the surrounding community and the state of Oklahoma? Well, Garrett was telling me the other day that there was a, a lady coming in to celebrate her 93rd birthday. And she walked over and said, uh, oh, happy birthday. Uh, we're all just passing through. They said, oh, no. I think she said, Missouri. We're from Missouri. We came. We wanted to celebrate at Reeves Place. So I know it's between Tulsa and Dallas on Highway 6975. But there are so many people who are saying, no, we traveled here specifically. So it's not only getting the traffic to come right up Main Street to Reeves Place. It's people who are making it a destination that we're really proud of. Reba, uh, you could have put this restaurant literally anywhere in the world and people would have gone to it. What made Atoka, what, what made you want to put it right here in Atoka? The people. The people asking. The people who had a passion. You know, you can try and do something by yourself all day long. And that's, that's hard. It, it's not even fun. But when you have people that are excited about it, more than I was excited about it, and they kept saying, it's going to help our town. It's going to help the community. It's going to bring jobs in. And I'm like, well, shoot, I can't say no to that. And so it just kind of grew. Kind of snowballed on me there for a little bit, but I'm really glad it all worked out like it did. Does it also just mean something to you that it's home? 
well, yeah, I mean, I get another excuse to get to come home and see Alice Pake and Susie, my nieces and nephews and friends. And now we got a meeting place. And, and that's what a restaurant's all about, is a meeting place where people come in and, and visit and eat and then visit and talk and didn't get all their business and, or their visiting done, so they come back again. And it's just a great place to come. And then I've been upstairs in the uh, merchandise. I found the cutest stuff up there. They didn't have Reba on it, but I loved it anyway. It was uh, these tongs that are like guitars, and then there's a guitar grater. I thought that was the cutest thing in the world. But it's just a fun place to be. And walking around, seeing the memorabilia, uh, some of the stuff I hadn't seen in years. I mean, I wore that jacket in the, I think in the early 90s or late 80s. I didn't, didn't know where that was. But uh, Justin McIntosh and Leslie Matthews and, and uh, uh, everybody's been going to the warehouses and finding all this stuff. So it's fun for me to get to see. You were talking about the music yeah yeah they've already had a lot of people come in with their just guitar and playing and that's what I wanted I wanted a very small stage not loud bands I want people to be able to sit right there and visit watch listen and visit but still be able to hear themselves think because I, that's just pet peeve of mine there you go <laughs> Swap recipes, swap bands. <laughs> but it is really neat it, to, to have acoustic uh, people coming up and playing. And because, um, you know, it's music has uh, helped build this place and get it all together, the fans. So this is a, a joint venture. And to be doing this with the Choctaws. The Choctaws are the best partner. They've been helpful. They've been, they've given advice of their opinions and it's all been 100 percent positive so man it, it was just a win-win situation for me are they talking about any new hotels or anything that this because it's i have heard that i couldn't tell you which ones but yeah there's a lot of activity going on around here what Can you tell us your impact heard about the library well, the upstairs, after we were talking about what would be on the bottom floor, and we wanted this to be cut out so people upstairs could also see what's going on down here in the music and, and um, whatever happening. Uh, then we got to the third floor, and that would be for merchandise. And um, when Mama passed away in March of 2020, I was going on tour. So all that stopped. And so Mama passed. Uh, 14th or 15th and I was back getting ready to go on tour and Susie called me and said well she's she's going on and so we came back the 15th of March to ha uh, pick out everything for her funeral and uh, Eddie Brown said well you're not going to have a funeral because this COVID's hit and I said what's COVID changed everything so tours off and so I stayed Susie and I we uh I just saw Pate. That didn't help. Uh, sorry, Pate. That's my brother. And so we were, uh, Susie and I started cleaning up Mama and Daddy's house, and and Susie would do the bookkeeping stuff, and I did the books, and and uh, and that's why we wanted to do a library for Mama, and it didn't work out. Didn't work out. Couldn't figure out why it didn't work out. Tell you, God's got the cutest ways of making things work out. And so on the third floor, there's all most of Mama's books. And um, I was looking at them, and I could I knew what room that book was in because I boxed them all up. And it's really a special room. And when you walk up there and see it, I hope you feel what I felt. Mama's up there just kind of going, yeah, let's have a seat, grab you a book. Really special. Reba, in a lot of ways, this restaurant is your legacy. It's your mom's legacy as well. Talk about how committed you are to ensuring that it carries on throughout the years. Oh, it has to. Uh, it has to carry on throughout the years because I can see what it's done for the town and the community and the excitement. Uh, I, I got a buddy over by Paul's Valley, and she's been here three times, Beth, Beth Hill, and she'll bring friends. And it, it's just, It's just a... A, a great place, as I said earlier, just to meet your friends and have fun with good food, good drinks. 
great atmosphere, great shopping, and then grab a book. What's your favorite thing on the menu right now? Oh, well, those sliders that I had a while ago yeah. with the Choctaw beef. Oh, my gosh. Let's bring up Chef. Oh, please. Come on, Chef Curtis. Y'all give him a big round of applause. <laughs> What's your favorite thing on the on the menu? Boy, it changes. It changes. Day to, you know what what you're hungry for, right? Uh -huh. So some days it's beans and cornbread, and some days it's cowboy chili, and some days it's a cherry coke barbecue burger like the slider. But uh, oh. I find myself oh. eating a lot more burgers than I probably ought to. <laughs> but but you told me a while ago that all the bread, all the ingredients are fresh, and you have lost weight. Yeah. And you eat here all the time. I do because. We make everything, everything from scratch. We make all the breads. We make that? there's there's no convenience products here at all, and that means there's no processed stuff. There's no chemicals. There's no preservatives. So even though I'm eating what is indulgent food, it's good for you. Yeah. Because it's real food. Yep. Love it. So I didn't know Reba. Um, I was uh, I was working with the city of Atoka on when they were trying to figure out what they wanted to do down here, and uh, got to meet Reba through the process. And I, I think uh, we got along okay, and so it uh, <laughs> it, uh, it it worked out real well. And I got to stay on board and, and keep working on it. Um, early on, I, I I put together kind of a questionnaire. And send it out to Reba and said, I, you know, and it just, it wasn't like, you write this menu, it was, what do you like to eat? What don't you like to eat? What do you like to drink? What don't you like to drink? And then use that kind of as just a starting point for the conversation so that we'd have a, a list. And we just kind of built it from there. It was, and what do you like to drink? Uh, uh, iced tea, water, uh, uh, any kind of whiskey with 7-Up or Sprite. The only thing I don't like is gin. I found that out. Yep. So I like tequila and beer and wine, and I'm not hard to please. I'm, I like it. And then when Rex and I would be at home and cooking, I, I started doing these smashed potatoes, and then Rex added the garlic and the caramelized onion, and I'd send Chef pictures of all the stuff that we'd cook at home. So it was fun. So when we were when we were testing the recipes out, and I'm sitting there and I've got these photographs, and I'm I've got a saute pan and I got potatoes and onions and this, and I'm like looking at the picture, I'm like, <laughs> well that looks about right, and then I'm well this tastes good, oh it's delicious, this is great, I know we got a winner there. Yeah, so. yeah, it's fun. What's been the biggest challenge of opening a restaurant? Oh, COVID, uh, and we had delays left and right. Yeah, supply line issues on from the elevators, a part of the electrical system. It was just everybody getting really creative to come up with ways to make the thing happen and get it done uh, but it's still it was it was more difficult than any other project i've done from that perspective so the fact that you overcame all this adversity and challenges does that, does that make today like, even more special oh yeah absolutely this was definitely worth waiting for yeah and these folks over here they put so much effort into it that to me i think is the thing that really makes today incredible it's just knowing how much work they've put in over the last six weeks to get to get here the training everybody was enthusiastic I, I would get reports in from different people and and that the feedback what you see on Facebook and then friends emailing and texting and stuff that's you know they don't have to if they didn't have anything good to say they wouldn't be texting but to go out of their way to let you know that it was really good it was nice Jeff, how inspiring has it been for you to see everything come together in terms of the menu and collaboration and everyone working together to pull off this magic that we're doing? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, some jobs you go to because you're getting a paycheck and, uh, and that's about it. And this, this isn't that. I, I think this place, it's, it's for, for, for a lot of us, for Chef Jordan and myself, I, I think if we could afford it, we'd come and work here for free. It's uh, watching it become this place that feels the way it does with the chances to tell these stories and to create memories it's 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 the breath of life one Jeff Curtis, i saw that you do a lot of uh, farm to market is your menu going to rotate yeah we'll keep the menu changing pretty regularly um, a lot with the seasons um, like you said we've got uh, i think at this point we're up to 27 vendors that we're working with so you know we've, we've got a couple of big broadline vendors but we've got produce from seven different farms we've got 
quail from one particular farm in Texas. We've got the Choctaw beef, of course, which is a big deal for us, being able to have beef that's from right here in, you know, within 100, never travels more than 150 miles from Atoka and processed for us custom over in Colgate. So we get it all fresh daily. Uh, lots of small farms, an Amish chicken farm that we're working with. Nothing is, nothing is bought just because it's easy to buy. It's the stuff that's great for the guests, which means that you have to change the menu to match what's available when it's available. Bake, Bake had a question. Oh, thank you for that, Pake. When I was 16 years old, Herman Jones down there, uh, the Ford place, uh, had a contest. They had one over at Colgate, and then they had one here at Atoka, and it was going to be for Miss Atoka Ford, Miss Atoka County Ford. And all you had to do is just write out an essay. So I entered, Mama helped me write it up, and I entered it, and I won this Ford Torino car for six months. I put 18,000 miles on it. <laughs> We went to Cheyenne in it for the rodeo, came home, went to Colorado, and I went to basketball camp over Lindsay. So, uh, Pake and Susie and myself and Kelly Ryan, Roger Wills, and Gary Rayburn, we all played down there in front of it. We got pictures of us. So, it's good to come back, come back home. Reba, what makes this place different compared to all the other known artists in the venue? Oh. I don't know. I haven't been to theirs. <laughs> I'm sorry I haven't. Um, but I, I hope they're having as much fun as we are. How, what kind of, how much does, I know you grew up nearby, but how much were you in Atoka? How much was it part of your growing up memories? Um, oh my gosh, well, the Harmon Jones deal, and then Susie and I came down to Thompson Theater one afternoon to, I think it was Gone with the Wind. We wanted to watch it, and we got down. We both remembered we didn't have any money, <laughs> and so we took the back seat out of Mama's car, and we found enough change to get into the theater, and then get some popcorn and something to drink, and so we watched the movie. So we and the Toka Trail Riders. Daddy was one of the one of the few one of the many men who helped start the Toka Trail Riders, and we went on trail rides and went out here to the rodeo and uh, just lots of stuff. We, we were down here a lot. Can you kind of, you know, this is your life, this is your world. You can say Susie and Kate perform me. I sit there and they'll come up here and perform a few times. These people down here are probably from 1970 something. When you started with the rodeo. Yeah. Well, you have to say to the people, yeah. Wow, thanks. <laughs> thanks for wanting to be a part of this very special event it's it's taken so many people so long for this to happen and to materialize and for this day to finally get here I know you're just going praise the Lord <laughs> but it's it's really really special and I'm, I'm just very thankful that y'all showed up today to get the word out because uh, it, it is a good good place to eat it's fun the atmosphere it's just got a good vibe about it I walked up and down the stairs in the elevator, and, and it's just got a great vibe to it. It's kind of like, yeah, glad y'all are in here. What do you have to say about all that? I love it. That's, I mean, it's all about making memories. And if we, if we bring these folks here and we tell them the stories mm -hmm. and we give them a great meal and they talk to their friends and their family and this becomes the thing that they're still talking about when they get home. Yeah then I think we've, we've done what we set out to do. Because we love stories and good food. Yes? Reba, a big question I'm sure everyone will have tonight. For those who may be thinking about coming out here, how, have you considered or have there been any talks about if this location is successful, opening more Reba places across the table as well? <laughs> <laughs> he had a lot of hair when he started with us. <laughs> I was like Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just get this one on the road first. <laughs> but thank you for that vote of confidence. Maybe you think the next big Oklahoma star might perform on this stage? Oh, I hope so. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I, I, yeah. Let's just go for it, absolutely. That'd sure be fun. Wouldn't it, though? Yeah. <laughs> Got discovered? Yes. Yeah. How do you feel about your song? I loved it. I thought that was really cool. Um, 
few years ago, I had no idea what TikTok was, and to be a part of it, I'm thrilled to pieces. To, it was really cool. I loved it. Yes? Um, you said you like to tell stories in your songs. Does your menu also tell stories? Oh. So when we, when we crafted the menu, we knew that it had to first and foremost be rooted in this part of the world. And it's with beans and cornbread, chicken fried steak, the things that are our home here. The rest of the menu, we tried to follow where Reba's music and the songs and the stories in those kind of went along. So you've got things that are from Nashville, and you've got things that are from Memphis, you've got things from New Orleans, you've got things from south of the border that are all kind of rooted in different parts of how we interpreted all of the, the picture of, of Reba's music. And uh, especially when you look at the cocktails and the, the stories and the signature cocktails here, I think it's probably where you see that the strongest, but that's definitely the inspiration. Shannon, are you a fan? Me? Are you a fan? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> He's not nearly as big a fan of me as I am of him. <laughs> Do you uh, think the ambition star of this? Ooh. You know, I, I, I last I checked, Michelin doesn't come to Oklahoma. Well, but you know, for me, it's like the the, the, the fancy awards and things are. I think that they're great and they're cool and they make you feel good. But I will feel much better if the people that come in <laughs> love what they eat than than I ever will from a plaque on the wall. Amen. So, that's, that's great. Last question. Yes. Uh, you have been to Oklahoma, like our Fun. Yeah, you go for it. You, yeah. So, um, for me, you know, I, I'm actually I'm I'm building the house here in the Toka, um, which I you know I moved moved here from from I lived in Bartlesville last and decided you know all these different places you can live down here. I fell in love with this town, and so I think the thing that people need to know more than anything else is that it is just such a friendly, welcoming place when you get to talk to the people from here and how excited they are about not just this, but everything. They're the parade havenest town I've ever been in. <laughs> they love celebrations. They love, I mean, these are people who are just enthusiastic about life and they want to share it with people. And it's, it's addictive. It makes you want to be here and it makes you want to get to know them. Love it. <laughs> love it. Mm -hmm. Don't it make you feel so dad gum good? Oh, it does. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. We'll uh, move the stools and get some photos. So if you guys want to come up and get some photos, we can do that. Well, you're not leaving, are you? Yeah, we'll do you guys together and then separate. Okay? Sure. This goes